Hey everybody, Anthony here, FSU Off-Road. Welcome back to another video. Today, this video, we are working on race car things. And when I mean race car things, specifically, we're working on axles. Let me show you. Okay, specifically, talking about axles today. Now let me show you what we got. These are custom S&S fabrication nine inch housings with four inch race tubes, internally gussed, as you can see here. You can see the internal gust is there as well as the exterior welded on skid plates. This is going to be what we're going to be using here in the race Jeep. Over here on the race table, these are our 05 up Super Duty unit bearings drilled to eight on six and a half. Um, we'll probably do some modifications to these. Don't know what uh, bolt pattern we're going to do yet for our wheels, um, but this is what we're going to use on all four corners. Um, that way it'll just be one easier for spares and um, two uh, quick changes and you don't have to worry about grease and bearings and all that stuff when you do like with the uh, king pins and all that so we're kind of eliminating all that and we're just going to use unit bearings all four corners as well as our spare tire carrier um, we want to utilize our spare on the spare tire carrier as well uh, we'll get to that in another video, but these are our SNS Fab outer knuckles. Um, they also incorporate the unit bearing on the front. They have 50 degree steering, and we're going to be using these to build our front axles as well. Now, you might be wondering why they're not on the Jeep themselves. Well, we wanted to verify that everything was going to fit underneath the chassis first um, with no problems with clearance. Um, so now that we got them here, it's going to be time to get these things underneath. Um, but first things first, we're going to start with this rear axle and kind of go over everything that we're going to do for the rear. Okay got the rear axle here on the bench and i just want to do a huge shout out uh digging deeper racing one of our big big sponsors helping us out with these axles um sns fab out of missouri uh, that's where these axles are go up there give them a like follow and uh see what other stuff they got but before we get started on all this i just definitely want to do a huge shout out to them and a huge thank you um, for supporting us small racers now then, this axle, like I said, it has the big Super Duty unit bearing cups on both ends, which we're going to utilize. And then it's got this big, thick skid plate. It's internally gusseted. It's big enough to run a 10 slash 10 and a half inch ring gear. More than likely, we're going to be running a 10 inch ring gear for this though. Um, as well as, if you kind of notice, one side's a little bit longer than the other. We went ahead and got it offset. That way our axle shaft links are the same uh, it's just going to be easier with spares that we don't have to carry multiple axle shafts um, so that's kind of one of the reasons why it's a little offset there but the one thing that i do want to do is we're going to put a truss on the rear very similar to the miller motorsports um, luckily along with some other trail gear stuff we got a trail gear truss to go on that um, we'll probably do some modifications to that as well internally gusset it um, to make it a little bit stronger uh, we have tmr link brackets to go on this and then once we get to once we get to the top part we're going to kind of build off of the back or off of the top pier to do our um, triangulation on the upper links it's time to start digging into this getting some stuff fabbed up mocked up tacked on here and see if we can't get it underneath the jeep and uh see how it's going to look. Working on the axle here. As you can see, got all of it plated up 
good grinder makes a good welder. My motto. Anyways, got everything ground down flush where you want you when you paint it, you won't even be able to see it. It won't even matter. Now I'm just kind of slowly working on welding everything. Um, I'll just do small sections on the end, work our way to the center. I went ahead and put our tag back on there. We kind of just welded it on the center there. And then we'll just work our way back and forth. But on top here, um, went ahead and cut out a plate to start doing it on our inserts. Now let me show you that right now. Quick. What I mean by that is, like I said, obviously put in the supports there to strengthen the overall truss as well as the axle. Now, cut these out to fit in place here. Let me show you that. Now, what's gonna happen is, is these are gonna sit in there like so, and I left a little overhang. So what I'll do is I'll weld that up on both sides. You can see the overhang. I'll weld it, that way it'll secure it in that spot so basically it's a small block here all to the housing where it won't rotate then i'll put another plate and another plate i'll do the same thing all the way out on until the end and then that way it's internally gusseted and secured and this axle is not going anywhere we are almost done welding up this truss and i went ahead and welded together our lower link brackets so that way I can weld a little bit, do something else, come back, weld a little bit, do something else. Uh, that's what I've been doing. Got the lower links done. Now it's time to get them mocked up here. I got the axle zeroed out here. Um, so we're gonna get those positioned where they're not hanging down super low. Um, that way we can also build our upper links accordingly to the lower links. And uh, I'm gonna put it about three inches off from the edge here. That way we'll have plenty of space for, for brake lines and things like that. Um, and then what we're gonna to try to do is I'm gonna build these axles for, uh, or at least the link brackets for 40 inch tires, which means there should be a separation of roughly 10 inches. Um, and I wanna do that just for preparing for the future, whether in the 4800 class, obviously you run 37s, but you know, who knows where this could go. And uh, you know, I just wanna go ahead and prepare for 40s. 4400 a lot of guys run 40s maybe i'll have trail tires for 40s i don't know possibilities are endless but everything is looking good the welds looking good they're nice and hot all the way around um, so i'm just going to continue to knock this out and then we're going to uh, do some custom upper link brackets here and then bolt on some unit bearings and get this thing underneath the jeep well as you can see got the so all off the table, got the garage cleaned up a little bit, and you can kind of see the axle separation, how it points to the front link mounts. Now, um, before I start getting into the four link lower trailing arm suspension with the, with the coilovers, I want to get our fuel cell kind of mocked up where it's going to be. That way I know that full bump that there's not going to be any interference when we do decide to put our links in. And what we have is the Jeep Speed 32 gallon jazz cell. And um, it's kind of what this chassis was kind of designed around was to run this with this um, fuel cell mount kind of underneath here. So we'll get it all initially mocked up in the Jeep. That way we can build our links, make sure there's not gonna be any interference with these upper links. Huge shout out to Matt. Got this off Facebook Marketplace as well. So Matt, I appreciate it, man. Thank you for shipping this across the country for me. As the expression goes, out with the old, in with the new. Before I started building this, I knew one of the things that was gonna happen was I was gonna be parting out my trail rig. Before I started racing, my trail rig was an old 89 Cherokee that I had buggied out. I'll show a picture here. Anyways, it's kind of bittersweet, but 
Uh, there's a lot of components on it that we're going to be using to build our new race chassis here. One of it's going to be all of our link materials, things like that. If you've priced that stuff out lately, it's super expensive. Um, but luckily, all of it came from one of our good sponsors, Barnes Four Wheel Parts. Um, so I'm just going to continue to utilize those guys um, with a lot of the components and continue to get this rear um, mocked up. Got it all flexed out, kind of got everything mocked up. Um, found the best ideal location for the shocks as far as where they'll sit on the links. So now we can build our trailing arms. Um, we were able to get our complete 12 inches of up travel and 10 inches of down travel with that with an overall of 22 inches. So it kind of fits um, right there perfect for the 20 to 24 inches that I was trying to get. You put some bump stops in there, minimize them an inch, and some limit straps, minimize another inch. So that's 20 inches overall travel here in the rear. And I think that's gonna be ideal for what we're doing. Um, the overall wheelbase ended up being a little bit longer. It's about 115, which is probably okay. Um, we'll just have to adjust. We can adjust it accordingly with the hounds and things like that, kind of shorten it and lengthen it. However, but um, the way it kind of sits now, I kind of like it. Where it sits, um, how it flexes out, it's really smooth. No issues, no binding. So, with that being said, um, it's time to start fabbing up our trailing arms. We just used some two by four quarter inch because that'll give us the one and a half inch separation that we need for shocks. We ripped it, um, we drilled a couple holes, and then what I'll do on the back side here is this arm is I'll actually plate it. I'll put a little drain plug or a drain hole there and we'll water what's in there and we'll cap both sides off. On the inside there, we'll melt this cooling up. So this is our, um, Anthony calls it a puzzle piece, really it's just a TMR anti-wobble piece for the trailing arm. I don't know what the heck that is really, but I'm learning. The hell? No, this is the trailing arm, I'm pointing at it. Oh, this is the trailing arm. <laughs> yeah, so what these are comprised of, you take that piece off, it's comprised of a, a uni ball. They use this one a lot in IFS suspension systems for steering um, as well as the articulation. But what TMR did, they used this Deller and bushing to kind of sit on the inside of it um, as, a, as a full assembly there. And then when it sits inside the housing here, it only gives you about four degrees of rotation. So whenever you mount your shock on top of the trailing arm, like we did here, um, it doesn't allow the trailing arm to rotate. Therefore, saving your shocks, coilovers, bypasses, whatever you mount. But we'll get this all tacked on there, weld it all up, and um, we'll show you the end result.
as you can see, we got everything welded up back internally here. We got our external gusset. We've got the anti wobble. Build a little piece to go over top of the anti wobble. Um, got our drain plug on both sides there. Yeah, this is going to be our trailing arm system. We'll have some adjustability here in the rear and I think it's going to work out great. So went ahead and kind of attached the, the cool over again um, and everything is ready to go. Now I just got to duplicate this same process on the other side. With that said, I'm going to conclude this video here. Um, I'll work on the front next after I get the other trailing arm done. So stay tuned for that. Hope you guys like what you saw. Make sure you hit the like button. Comment down below what you would have done differently. If anything, if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.